Asynchronous programming is one of those concepts that start to emerge once you get past the basics in software development. At its core, it's about starting a task and moving on to other work while waiting for that task to complete without blocking the main thread or flow of your program. The simplest version of this is making an API call. You send a request and instead of waiting around for the response, you pass in a callback, use a promise, future or async await depending on the language. While the request is off doing its thing, your program keeps going. Behind the scenes, the request is being handled by a separate thread or an event loop depending on the environment. For example, Node.js uses a single threaded event loop, while languages like Java or Python might use thread pools or async frameworks that manage things differently. But like everything in software development, it can get a lot more complicated. You're not limited to just one background task. You can initiate as many background tasks, far more than the number of CPU cores on a system because asynchronous tasks aren't always CPU bound. The number of background tasks you can run efficiently depend on how your runtime handles concurrency, threading, and the nature of the work. Let's say you're building a server that processes image uploads and resizing the images is part of the upload flow. If a user uploads several photos, instead of resizing each image one after the other, you can kick off asynchronous tasks or use worker threads to handle each image in parallel, which speeds up the entire process. Another example of this is a mobile app that needs to fetch multiple data sets like user profile info, recent messages, and app settings. Instead of making these requests one after another, you can kick them off all at once and wait for them to complete together, which is much faster for the user. However, asynchronous and multi-threaded programming comes with caveats. First, each thread or background task runs independently. If one crashes or throws an exception, you need a plan on how to handle that. Otherwise, you risk failing silently or worse, corrupting your program state. Second, threads can share resources, files, memories, and databases. That means you need to coordinate them carefully to prevent race conditions. Another thing to watch out for is the thread lifecycle management. If you're manually working with threads or worker pools and forget to clean them up while they're no longer needed, they'll stick around wasting resources. This is often called thread leak and it's a sneaky way your app can slow down or crash over time. Now, depending on the language, some of this is abstracted away. For example, JavaScript handles most async behaviors through event loops and doesn't expose threads directly. In contrast, languages like Java, Python, or C-sharp give you more control and responsibility over threads, task cancellation, and error handling. So it's important to understand the tools and the controls a language gives you and what it expects you to handle on your own. The Uber point is asynchronous programming and concurrency lets you do more faster, but they also introduce complexity. Timing issues, race conditions, and resource contentions can sneak up if you're not careful. Still, when implemented properly, it's one of the most powerful tools in your toolbox, especially when building efficient and high-performance applications. Follow Omakotes for more programming videos like this.